So I want to share with you a, uh, an assignment I want you to do, and this just needs to be done the first week. This is the, right here, this OHM student assignment tutorial. And I took it once, I'm going to do it again. I got a 97.5 the first time. But let's go ahead and go through this. Uh, this there's no real secrets here. This is going to show activity in the class and teach you how to input information for different types of problems that are presented. So let's go ahead and I'll use all my assessment assessments. There we go. Fresh for me there. Okay, so you might see things like multiple choice questions. So multiple choice questions require you to choose one answer from a selection, choose the correct result from five plus two. Well, what's five plus two? It's seven. Okay. Next one, multiple answer questions require you to choose all the correct answers from the given. Select all right answers. So right, right, is the only ones that are right. Okay. Next one, matching the questions require you to match each entry on the left with one of the choices on the right. Not all the choices on the right will, aren't, will necessarily be used. So what sound does the cow make? The cow makes the C, the moo sound. The cat makes the meow sound. And the dog makes the arf sound, which is A. And now, from this section, I can go ahead and click Check Answer and see what happens. Oh, I got them all correct. Good. Okay, now I'll go on to the next section. I got um, two things here. It says, sometimes an equation or problem will have multiple solutions. When there are multiple solutions, you can list them separately by a comma, separated by a comma. For example, the solutions are 5 and 10, you'd enter 5 comma 10. And the space is not necessary. So I'll list all the positive numbers less than 10. So I'll do 2. I do the space and see what happens. 4, uh, 6, oh, positive unit, that's right. 6 and 8. Okay. Twinkle, twinkle, little, what do you think ends that one? Star. Star. So let's check answer. Hey, they're both correct. Okay. Moving on to the next one, often your answers will include negative numbers and decimal values. If your answer is not an exact value, you'll want to enter at least three decimal places unless the problem specifies otherwise. So 12 minus 34, I believe that's negative 22. Enter the number below exactly, no rounding, so 34.1253. Enter this as a decimal. So for that, I can go down here and do the calculator and type 53 divided by 6. And it's 8.8333333. So I'm going to go three places. I'll do 8.833. That's three places. Okay. Enter the number 2.583333. You're out of the nearest hundredth. So the nearest hundredth is the, where this 8 is. So the 3 doesn't round it up, so it'd be 2.58. Okay, let's see what the answers are, if I got those right. Yay, I got it right. Okay, let's go on to the next one. In special cases, you may need to enter, that's supposed to be infinity, that OO for infinity or negative OO for negative infinity, I for imaginary, U for union, D and E for does not exist, and greater than or equal to for greater than or equal to. So how many numbers are there between 1 and 4? Well, there's technically an infinite number of numbers. So let's see if I did 0, 0, and see if that works. For infinity. How about 18 divided by 0? Well, that's undefined, so we'll say it does not exist. Let's check answers. Hey, I got them right. OK. Entering a fraction, sometimes questions ask for fractions, reduced fractions, or mixed numbers. Answers. Enter fraction 2 fourths. Four, 2 2 slash 4 for 2 over 4. The preview will show you how the computer is interpreting what you typed. So we're doing 14 over 24. 14 divided by 24. I could have just used this button here, uh, but we did not do that. Uh, we just I hit the slash button. Okay. And the next one. However, you should assume the question always wants a reduced fraction as an answer. So in the two-fourths example, you should enter one-half. 
Some questions will consider two fourths the same as one half, but you should get in the habit of, of always reducing your fractions to those terms. So 10 over 30, that would be 1 third. Uh, enter only a mixed number if prompted to do so. You will enter your mixed number like 5 and a third, 5 and a third. Notice the space, the space that exists between the 5 and the 1 third is needed when typing in your answer. And proper fractions will not be accepted. Also, be sure to reduce the fractional portion of the mixed number. This is where I, it took me like a few times to get this one right. So 14, and I'll do a space. Now 2 over 30 does reduce to become 1 over 15. Let's see if it works this time. If the fraction contains more than one complex, more complex terms, the numerator or denominator, you will need to use parentheses to create the correct notation for that fraction. For example, the fraction x plus 3y over 2 times the quantity z minus x. Let's show you how to type it. So the way I actually like to type this one, I have 2 over 3 plus x to over 4y plus 1. So I'm going to do that. I'll do the fraction thing again. I'll get my 2 on top. I'll get my 3 plus x on the bottom. Then I'll get 4 times y plus 1. And let's check these answers. Crossing the fingers. Okay, I got something wrong. So, no, because I switched the 2 and the 4. So 42. And let's check that again. There we go. Next one. I wonder how many of you saw that 2 and the 4 versus the 2, 4 instead of 4, 2. Okay. We're going to try entering these things. 5 to the 10th power minus 7 over 6. Now, you can do a lot of these from uh, keyboard uh, buttons, but you can also do it here. I'll do 5. I'll do this x to the power. It gives me a power button. I'm going to hit the side arrow to bring that back down again. Minus 7. Then down below we have a 6. This one we have 14y to the third power. So 14y, then I'll do this button. And that's going to give me put a 3 there. Put the side button to come down. By the way, for keyboards, you could, instead of hitting this button, you could hit uh, Shift 6 on most keyboards. I guess a little carrot button, we call that little arrow. So plus 7x. That's, that's the carrot button I just hit, squared. Or you can push that button. And this one's for subscripts. I'm not sure where you're doing the keyboard for subscripts, though. Not as common of an operation. Here we have the square root of 5 plus z. First time I read that, I saw x, and I got it wrong. Okay, so it's going to be 5 plus z, all onto the thing, square root. If you want to get out of the square root, you'd hit the side arrow button to the right. And then, now we have a square root of 10 over t plus 5. The fraction, I'll do a square root. I'll do a 10. Then I'll do a t plus 5 down below. And let's check answers. Hey, got them right. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So it says you may need to enter an in inequality or draw a solution to one on a number line if you Master this, the interval notation for these problems will be easily learned. So a is less than negative 4. So they want to do a less than button and negative 4. Then here we're going to graph it. So given that it's a less than, we're going to do the open, not the dots. So do that. Put that at negative 4. And this was kind of cool to play with. Um, line segments, so I'm going to draw from here all the way down and gives me the arrow. Now, if I wanted a segment, I would stop and I wouldn't give the arrow, but it's a, a line, not a line segment. And I had to start within that circle drawing so it connected to the circle. The first time I did this, it gave me a space. Okay, let's check answer. Hey, okay. And here's number eight. Into the, the correct, or sorry, the coordinate point as um, answers as you'd write the original pair. So enter the points in the graph. So we have A is at 3, 0. So we have something at 3, 0. 
and then I'll do a comma, and the other one is at negative one, comma, negative four. Now these answers might be different than yours when you take it because I've noticed these have changed since I took it uh, a few minutes ago. And next one, uh, you're going to graph. So we've got a dot. We're going to put something at 1, 1, and something at 2, 2. Okay. And then what do we have down here? We're going to do a line at 1, 1, and 2, 2. So a line that's going to go through 1, 1, and 2, 2. There you go. Check those answers. Looks like those are correct. So now I can submit and end. And I got 100%. So yay! Uh, hopefully that helps when you're doing these. Um, you can see the process. So this is something you should probably do as your first assignment, uh, other than put a discussion posting about who you are. Okay. I hope that you know, hope that helps. If you have questions, please let me know. I believe you can retake this as much as you need to to get those skills down. And uh, anyway, I look forward to seeing you as you uh, progress in the class. Thank you.